As you all know, I love Earthworm Jim and I am a huge fan, and it's one of my top 3 franchises right next to Fallout and Resident Evil. Seeing that I'm one of the only few people on YouTube who does videos talking about him, I thought for Earthworm Jim's birthday, I'd talk about the story of the video games. Keep in mind that for this video, I won't be talking about the story of Earthworm Jim 3D or Menace of the Galaxy or Earthworm Jim HD, because 1. Earthworm Jim 3D and Menace of the Galaxy are considered not canon of the first two games due to them being based off more of the TV show, and for Earthworm Jim HD, well, it's a remaster and there's not that much for it. I will also not be talking about the TV show, the Marvel comics, the Denver comics, or the Tenable reboot books, so I'll only be talking about Earthworm Jim 1 and 2. Now, let's explain the story of Earthworm Jim 1. The plot begins with an Earthworm trying to escape from a crow. Meanwhile, in outer space, Psycrow is delivering a super spacesuit that was made by Professor Monkey for a head. Yes, that's his name. And was made for the evil queen. Anyways, the suit was then stolen, and Psycho chases after the ship. While they face off, Psycho pulls out a big gun, and not THE big gun, and destroys the ship. The suit then falls into a void in space and falls on the planet Earth. We then cut back to the Earthworm from earlier coming out of the hole before being crushed by the ultra high tech indestructible cyber spacesuit. Thus transforms the Earthworm into Earthworm Jim, bringing him to life. With this new birth, Jim checks out a red object that ends up disintegrating a crow with a plasma blast. Jim also leans against a tree and ends up knocking down due to the super strength and also crushes the crow. Jim thinks that life could be a dream now until he hears something and hides. Turns out, it, it turns out to be Psycro, the intergalactic bounty hunter from earlier. He speaks to the evil queen pulsating, bloated, festering, sweaty, pus filled, malformed slug for a butt. Yep, that's entire name on a device and informs her that the super suit is nearby and that the suit will make the queen slug for a butt far more powerful, I mean more beautiful than her twin sister Princess What's Her Name who is in prison and Jim decides to go on a quest to find the Princess What's Her Name while Psycho hunts him down in the suit. The journey starts in New Junk City, a land filled with junk basically it's a junkyard, filled with crows, mutated garbage that could be named Billy to Ben, and at the same time, Jim also launches a cow into the air. That cow definitely isn't going to cost something. Well, at the same time, the two men who own this area is Chuck, a man who wears overalls and vomits fish, and his dog Fifi, who appears multiple times for some reason. Anyways, later on, Jim ends up being separated from his suit, and once he gets back into it, he fights against Chuck, and once he's defeated, Jim pulls out his pocket rocket and flies into space. While in space, Jim tries to race to the next planet against Psycho, and if he wins the race, he gets to avoid him, and if he loses the race, he has to fight him. Now we get the planet Heck, a place filled with fire, lava, spikes, lawyers, spectre demons, elevator music, and classical music. This place is basically hell on earth. Jim progresses through this planet, fights against a snowman named Rusty that spits out fireballs, and at the end of this, Jim goes against the one who rose the throne of this planet, aka Evil the Cat. Jim avoids all of his attacks and once back in his suit, finishes him off by getting rid of all nine of his lives before going to the next planet. If you could call it that. And now we get to a really strange place. A shed-like place filled with wood, nails, insects, I can't tell if they're mosquitoes or flies. Most importantly, Broody, a dinosaur that is blind as a bat but has a good sense of smell, and Jim must lure the strange creature to help him get through the obstacles. But if he gets too close, Jim becomes the sandwich. Down the tubes, a planet filled with nothing but water, an underwater base, and a giant muscular cat that can crush a gym or throw him around, a giant hamster that Jim could ride in order to attack them, and most importantly, their leader, Bob the Killer Goldfish, who wants Jim's suit since it could make him the ruler of the planet and also the universe. Jim goes through this place and deals with his minions like number 4, and goes through a submarine in order to finally confront Bob and knock him out of his bull and then leave the planet, most importantly. Jim goes to another planet and encounters someone known as Major Mucus. They fight each other by bungee jumping off a cliff and trying to break each other's cords while avoiding the Mucus Flemin Bring. That's apparently the name of the creature, by the way, that lives in a pool of snot and tries to eat Jim whenever he gets close to it. Anyway, he defeats Major Mucus, but hey, best out of three. He then heads to level five and ends up encountering Professor Monkey for a head, the person slash monkey who made the super suit that brought Jim to life and also is meant for the evil queen. But Jim is now wearing it and he wants to suit back, and he ends up going through his entire laboratory, getting stuck in a metal ball, going through an area with no lights, running from a creature, and eventually fighting against a robot chicken. No, not that one, and not that one, but this one. 
Anyways, Jim defeats him and heads to the next planet. At the next planet, Jim ends up meeting a puppy named Peter and escorts him back to his home while avoiding various obstacles like robots, cranes, pits, and meteor showers. And also, if Peter Puppy gets hurt, he transforms to a giant monstrous dog creature and attacks anyone who's nearby. In this case, it's Jim. Anyways, after escorting him back home, Jim finally leaves. Jim ends up in the intestines of some sort of living organism, I'm assuming, and ends up going through it and fights against various fish and weird disgusting gooey creatures and fights against Doc Duodenum, aka the first intestine. All of this leading up to the final place, Buttville. And now, we finally get to a dark planet filled with dunder and spikes and insects that are controlled by the evil queen. Jim must first use his head, literally, in order to survive on this planet. And when Jim gets to the evil queen's, um, uh, what, what is this? You know, I don't know if I really want to know what this is. Anyways, Snut, who we see, ends up helps Jim a little bit. Don't worry, we'll talk about him later. And fights against the evil queen, pulsating, bloated, festering, sweaty, pus-filled, malformed slug for a butt. Which, fun fact, she is the easiest boss to fight against in the game. All I have to do is hold the shoot button. Anyway, after Jim fills her up with plasma, as in shooting her, she turns into a giant ball and blows up. We get to the ending of the game. Jim ends up encountering the princess, what's her name, and you know what happens. <coughs> Jaw drops the floor, eyes pop out of sockets, accompanied by trumpets, heart beats out of chest, a wooga a wooga sound effect, pulls chain on train with- When she's about to kiss Earth from Jim, remember the cow from earlier? Yeah, the one he launched back in Lejunk City? Well, just like how Fallout 3 logic goes, Jim's bad karma gets to him, and the cow comes back and crunches the princess what's her name. Jim walks away upset, and as the credits roll, the cow and princess what's her name end up falling into a pit of slime, and the crown just sits there. Jim grabs it and runs off, and that's the end of Earth from Jim. One. After the events of the first game, with the queen being defeated and princess being saved, if you're wondering how she's not dead, this was actually a pit of slime apparently. Anyways, after helping her out, Jim fell in love with her and wanted to try to woo the princess what's her name. Which is what's her name wasn't that interested into Earthworm Jim, since the Texan worm didn't resemble nothing like the prince that her mother used to tell stories of. Therefore, she refused Jim's love, and Jim would try to continue to woo her after his rejection. Anyways, he would try doing a lot of stuff like love songs, show up a physical strength, show a pocket rocket very fast, and Jim even did tons of dings, and at the end, Princess What's Her Name was impressed by various dings, like his Elvis collection, grooming habits, and a bumper sticker that says, Annealed with attitude? But most, and somewhat unimportant, Jim's bank account. And the money. the money. Decided, sure, why not, and love him. Suddenly, from the high ground, well, behind a rock, Psycho approaches and kidnaps Princess What's-Her-Name. The reason why is that since the queen slug for her butt is dead, thanks to Jim, Princess What's-Her-Name is the only heir left for the throne. And if she were to marry someone, they would become the monarch of the galaxy, the ruler of the universe, the master of all... Uh, the king of burgers, which is eligible for discounts at a place called Crazyware, a closing store for Monox, by the way. Psycho doesn't want Jim to become all of that, and he wants to become the master of the universe. I mean, the ruler of the universe. And now Jim must stop him before Psycho and what's her name get married at the Las Vegas system for a non-consent wedding. And Jim now must travel to other planets to find breadcrumbs and trails while going through many summer homes of various foes and villains from the first game like Bob and Evil the Cat, but also Jim has a psychic dinghy no one has not. So Jim first heads to ending with tangerines, Bob the Kelly Goldfish's summer home, filled with blunderbuss wielding octopus, a bowling area for number four, and also pigs and grannies. But most importantly, Jim eats Bob the Killer Goldfish. He eats them! Later on, Jim heads to a planet called Birkbank? That is home to Lorenzo Larvae and an evil ruler named Pedro Pupa who ends up encountering an ancient temple of Psycho. I think this is kind of a typo, but anyways, Jim follows Psycho there and ends up being buried in trap while trying to get out of there before an earthquake happens. Puppy Love, on a planet that is home to Peter Puppy and a city known as Nowhere City, added a spaceport tower where Psycho has a princess there and is also holding all of Peter Puppy's children hostage, all 600 of them, while throwing them out the window while Jim has to use a giant marshmallow to catch them. Don't worry, Jim will come back here a few times. After that, Jim heads to an intestine planet that is Doc Dudodenum's summer home and also disguises himself as a blind cave salamander, dodging all sorts of pinballs and participates in a game show. The Flying Cube. 
Jim goes to a new planet to search the locks and castles, and at the same time must dodge various cannonball missiles, cannibals shooting Roman centurions. <laughs> is, is that what it says? A Psycho warned Major Mucus of Jim's visit, and also must destroy Major Mucus's platform by leading an air balloon, or blimp according to the manual, in order to blow him up. Puppy Love 2. Part 2 of Puppy Love, but more difficult. Afterwards, Jim heads to a planet full of cows, and there the cows call him the Brahmin Brahma. I guess it explains the statue in the next-gen version of the games. Anyways, UFOs want to capture cows and adopt them in order to experiment on them. So Jim must save all the cows there while trying to hurry up since Psycho is getting away with the princess. Anyways, the Circus of Scares, a traveling circus that is owned by Evil the Cat's cousin, Flagtasius. And they decide to switch jobs since Evil needs a break from controlling Heck. Anyways, Jim must inflate his head and float around while trying to catch up to Psycho and avoid Evil the Cat. And the series contains a lot of stuff. Multiple stuff like pea shooting carnies, a tilted world that's recommended to go to after eating a bunch of fried food, and also a hammer bell competition thing that Jim competes in. And also, an elephant man? This circus sounds very old fashioned, in a strange way. Anyways, while not getting distracted, Jim goes to a planet filled with paperwork, thanks for being fooled by Psycho, where mask lawyers, accountants, and giant family candidates don't want to kill Jim, but instead want to get him to fill in an ISO 9000 form in order for him to renew his Class C pocket rocket pilot license. And Jim must find the right door before the paperwork and files consume him and make him not remember anything. Anyways, afterwards we get Puppy Love 3, which is just the final act of Puppy Love, but even more difficult. And then finally, we get to level 8. After Jim helps out Peter's children, he then heads to a planet made out of meat where the days are measured by patties that set and rise. The bacon sizzling, the steaks are juicy, and the eggs are some reason there. And a salt bottle that wants to kill Jim, and Jim has to run away from it, unless he wants to lower the remains of the vault dweller. Anyways, Jim also must fight against a giant flaming yon that shoots fire, and not get forked by the giant forks. Like, holy fork, this level was forking crazy. All this leading up to Cupid's Cathedral. And then finally, after traveling across the land and searching far and wide, Jim finally gets to the Las Vegas system, aka the mythical shrine of Mu, the hose of Holstein, the Str Okay, this goes by many names, but you get the point. In this case, depending on what version you're playing on, it's either a cathedral or a digital area. Anyways, it's a church that has a 24 hour service. And Jim must race against Psycho in order to get there. If Psycho beats him there, Jim dies, and if Jim beats him there, he calls a cab and crushes Psycho. And finally, the ending. Anyways, after Psycho loses the race, Jim wins the race and wins back the heart of the Princess What's Her Name. Scratch that, it turns out she was actually a cow in a suit, so I guess Jim won back the heart of the cow and defeated Psycho? Oh wait, scratch that again because Psycho's actually a cow in a suit, meaning that Jim defeated a cow and won back the heart of a cow. Okay, is it done? Never mind, scratch everything I just said since Jim was a cow as well, meaning he defeated a cow to win back the heart of a cow. Is there anything else in the story? Could it end? Could it end now? Oh, thank god it ended. That is the story of Earth from Jim 1 and 2. What a wacky story. Like I said, this was only about the first two games and not the other games. And most importantly, happy 30th anniversary for the Earth from Jim series. And also happy 30th birthday to Earth from Jim. It's just us, Susa Chan. Everyone else said they were too busy.